Well, every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. has a heart attack or stroke, and many of these patients will experience a second heart issue. Dr. Seth Baum is the president of the American Society for Preventative Cardiology, and Mahendra Mahabir is a patient. So let's, uh, let's talk about this, Doc. I want to ask you, what are the signals that high cholesterol, I mean, we know about high cholesterol and being bad, but what are the signals that it, it may be putting us at risk for a heart attack or stroke? Well, I think the first thing to establish is that LDL cholesterol or low density lipoprotein cholesterol, the bad cholesterol it's known as, um, has clearly been causally related to heart attack and stroke. What that really means is it causes heart attack and stroke. So high LDL causes heart attack and stroke, low LDL, lower risk. If we have somebody with a high LDL cholesterol and lower it, we lower that individual's risk. What we do is, we, if we find somebody who's got uh, risk for heart disease and has a high LDL cholesterol, we start statins. Statins are the mainstay of therapy. Um, but sometimes they're not enough. Sometimes patients have what's called residual risk. Their, their LDL remains too high. And since the summer of 2015, we've had drugs available called the PCSK9 inhibitors that are truly revolutionary and, in my view, the greatest advance in lipid-lowering management in 30 years. Um, these drugs have been available, yet they've been denied repeatedly by payers or insurance companies to the, to the degree of over 80% in some of our studies. Well, is this, is this a uh, part of the standard of care, or is this a, a, a different type? And how do you know when your patient is, you know, would require one of these different types of treatments? Yeah, that's a great question. It is standard of care, absolutely standard of care. In fact, the FDA clearly stipulated in 2015 when we should use these drugs, and other uh, societies and organizations have weighed in. Uh, in, the, in December of 2017, Repatha had a change in its indications, saying that, there, that for Repatha, the medication was, uh, could be used, uh, this is again, FDA stipulated, to reduce the risk of heart attack, stroke, and revascularization, which means stents or bypass, in patients with established cardiovascular disease or in patients in whom you just want to lower LDL cholesterol. So yes, definitely standard of care. We try very hard to reserve these agents, though, for the patients who are at highest risk. And we know that they're at highest risk because they've either had a heart attack or a stroke or a stent or a bypass, or their LDL is particularly high. They have FH, familial hypercholesterolemia. So there are a number of ways that we uh, risk stratify our patients to determine whether or not they would benefit from a PCSK9 inhibitor. And Mahendra, let me, uh, let me ask you, what has been your experience as a cardiovascular patient, and when did you find out you were at risk? Well, I am a young 43-year-old man who's had four heart attacks, seven stents placed, ballooned four times, five arteries bypassed, and been denied uh, uh, PCS canines uh, over and over when, when it first came out in 2015. So I was dumbfounded that uh, I didn't have access to it. Uh, so that, that had to be extremely it, frustrating. It was a struggle. Uh, exactly. Not only for me, for my family, but my doctors, my, my cardiologist uh, 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 knew that this was a medication that would help me and prevent this from happening, but yet uh, I was denied over and over up until I got involved, called the insurance company, which, you know, I found out that the patients have a very loud voice, but they need to be active. They need to get involved. Uh, the FH Foundation uh, helped me out uh, when the New York Times uh, article came out on my story. That's when I finally got approved, uh, which shouldn't have taken that long. Well, Doc, let's, uh, as we wrap up here, let's, so nobody else has to go through what Mahendra has, has gone through, how can patients out there and people out there uh, uh, find out more about this and find out how to get access and get approved? Okay, well remember the patient has the loudest voice, so get involved, call your insurance company, that's number one. Number two, you can call the insurance commissioner, but there are also other organizations that can help. The ASPC, the American Society for Preventive Cardiology, is releasing an app, a mobile app, on Sunday at the American College of Cardiology meeting. Uh, use that. Go on the FH Foundation website. They have great tools to help you. Use an organization like Patch. P-A-C-H, uh, online to be able to get access. There are many ways to do it, just never give up. And a special thanks to Amgen for sponsoring that segment.